okay, this is the closest to the crimes of Grindelwald we're ever going to get in this series. I don't like this one. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part 1. This was the big game changer. Not only in terms of coming to the conclusion of the series, this film is also the one that introduced the plethora of Part 1s and Part 2s that would come. Was it a necessary choice? Possibly. Did it open the floodgates for a crap ton of unnecessary Part 1s and Part 2s? You fucking bet yeah. This film follows Harry, Ron, and Hermione as they go off on their own quest now to try and take down Voldemort by going off their horcruxes. It starts off with a pretty big banger with the seven different different Harrys and them trying to get to the Weasley house and it all kind of turns out for nothing because after they get there and there's the wedding they're just like yeah we're just gonna go off on our own. I feel that what they were trying to do in this film is they were trying to squeeze in as much of the novel at least the main plot points that were in the Deathly Hollows novel and they try to shove it all of it into this film because in the second one there's not as much there's much more action there's much more drama rather than exposition because holy shit there's so much in it if you didn't read the books you could blink and miss that Grindelwald was in this movie I did when I watched this movie and I had read the book it's so stressing to try and keep up with all of the information that's happening in this film I was constantly asking my wife, hey, what is going on here? Because she had recently listened to the audiobook, so she knew more about what was actually going on because there's so many tidbits in this film that if you haven't read the book at all, if you aren't familiar with anything at all, you are out to lunch for a majority of this film. Sure, there are some kind of interesting tidbits here and there. Dobby has a great moment in this film, but that's not until the goddamn end. The Deathly Hollows animation is very good, but again, that also isn't until nearly the goddamn end. There's a lot that happens in this film that is just kind of circumstantial, and it's all building up to what the Horcrux is, but there's also a lot that doesn't even kind of explain itself. Also, the kids are just, I don't know, I, I just found the whole idea of them sharing the Horcrux, like, oh, we we'll gotta keep an eye on it. I was like, you guys, you could just put it on like a stick or something. Y you have that tent, just put it on something in the tent. It's not like it's gonna go anywhere. It only seems to act out for dramatical purposes in this film. It's a really hard watch because there's so much being shoved on you. There's so much information being not even spoon fed to you. It's being dumped into you from a freaking dump truck. So they can clearly focus on what's important is that having a dramatic conclusion, which is going to be part two. I don't think Deathly Hollows is badly shot. It's not badly acted either. Everyone's really decent in this film. The chemistry between the three leads is good as always, even if Ron is a little punk-ass little bitch towards the middle part of the film. And it's obviously it's because of the Horcrux, but uh, I thought the part was stupid in the book too, admittedly. But it is setting up a lot of stuff. It is paving the way for what would be number two, and I think that's why part one gets so much shit, is because of what it had to sacrifice itself to do in order for the series to end on a good note. Speaking of which, it's a little bit surprising to me that Warner Brothers didn't screw this series up at all in the slightest. Maybe this film like a little bit. Again, that's more so just how the film is put together. It was their choice obviously to do the one part one and part two and maybe, maybe it's not an unfounded choice. Maybe they could have made like a three and a half hour long film. They did it with Lord of the Rings. I don't understand why they couldn't have done it with Harry. It would have cut out also a lot of stuff that is just kind of unessential. Like the whole Grindelwald thing is just so circumstantial. Again, it is just right in there. Just like how Snape was really just at the very, very end of the last movie. Yeah, I'm the Half-Blood Prince. That's it. That's it. That's all That's all you're going to get. I feel like that's what's happened with this film. It's my least favorite out of all of the movies in the entire series. I could watch every single one over this one. It's setting up rather than actually being its own thing. And that is probably the biggest crime or the most unfortunate loss that this film suffers. So in the end, I'm going to give Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 a 3 out of 7. One movie below the bar. That's not too bad. But now we're going in to Deathly Hollows Part 2. So far, the highest rating I have given is Prisoner of Azkaban, which 
I was kind of reluctant to give it that score because I've always been hesitant to do, appreciate this film as much as everyone else does because everyone loves this movie, everyone loves the book, but it's hard to deny, at least from the filmmaking perspective, that it is as good as it is because it is, on honesty. So part two is now the last one to try and contend with the highest rated film in this entire series, at least in my own opinion. So make sure to check that review out. That will be coming out next. I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. It's been really fun to do about to watch part two right now so make sure to subscribe if you like this video leave a like as well if you did and i will be seeing you for our final harry potter review thanks for watching the video my name is nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic tv show undergrads it's been a while but i'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie thanks to a successful kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.